Is Monster Train better than Slay the Spire? Everyone leads busy lives in some way or another and if this can help you figure out if a game is going to click with you or be abandoned after 48 minutes then hopefully this can help you save your money and you can spend more time doing what you love. Monster Train is not available on the Nintendo Switch just yet, which does lend itself to being able to tackle a few battles, walk away, and instantly pick up where you left when you return to the Switch. However, the next best thing is that Monster Train is available on Xbox Game Pass, and you can check out our thoughts on if Game Pass is sustainable right here. Hell has finally frozen over when heaven has extinguished the flames that lurked beneath, and in Monster Train... You're the conductor of the Bone Shaker, a train that is descending back into hell with the last remaining spark to ignite the fires of hell before it's out forever, basically a reverse spire. As you descend towards the depths of hell on a railway that connects the two worlds, enemies, or in this case, heavenly allies, try to board the Bone Shaker to extinguish the last remaining spark once and for all, and that's pretty much the story. And although it's more than some other card-based roguelikes, I think there's a huge opportunity waiting in this genre to create a rich narrative. Visually, there is a lot more happening in Monster Train than others in the genre, which is more aesthetically pleasing but initially it's much more intimidating. With nothing of a tutorial which this game could have used, Monster Train throws you in the deep end, or in this case, throws you onto a speeding train. But the good news is that Monster Train feels much easier and more forgiving than other games like Slay the Spire, and initially kind of borders on too easy. Another card game that I have just recently played and reviewed was Fights in Tight Spaces, and that game is similar as well, but it does an excellent job of offering you a tutorial area which you can skip if you choose. Even if you're familiar with deck building or other card-based combat games, every game has intricate details that separate it from the competition, and a small tutorial would have gone a long way. And on each layer of hell that you descend through, there are two paths every time where you can alter what you need. This does make the game feel a lot less procedurally generated and removes a lot of the RNG that other roguelikes offer. Distilling things down, what sets Monster Train apart is the train aspect of the game. The train has four floors and enemies usually enter on the first floor and then work their way up after each action phase. This mechanic adds a level of tower fence to Monster Train in addition to the deck building and the roguelike elements that create endless combinations. Inside the Monster Train is where the metagame happens about which floor to place your units on and what order from back to front on each floor. Each floor only has a certain amount of space which adds a layer of strategy and usually from front to back it doesn't matter as much but different floors you could have tank style characters at the front to absorb the damage as enemies always attack the first person in line until they're defeated. Monster Train lacks the same hooks that other card games have, likely due to its repetitive feel. Games like Slay the Spire and Fights in Tight Spaces feel different because there feels like a lot more RNG at play, which can sometimes lead to frustrating results, but it does keep the game feeling fresh because around the corner could be a completely new experience. And just like other games where you unlock new starting characters or new decks, in Monster Train, you unlock new factions and then you unlock new cards that can be added to your hand for future runs. Thinking about it for a while and trying to figure out why other similar card games hooked me in, I came to a revelation. Games like Slay the Spire hooked me in immediately because I never felt like I was fully in control. Instead, it felt like I was usually at the edge of losing. It felt something like how most Resident Evil games manage your resources perfectly and made it feel like death was right around the corner, which added to the tension. Monster Train feels more akin to something like Doom, where resources are never scarce, and it just becomes a numbers game of destroying hordes of enemies and less about the tension. Monster Train doesn't create a new genre of games like Slay the Spire did when it first released, but it refines and also adds enough fresh ideas to make this game a worthy game to play if you're looking for something to play after Slay the Spire. If you enjoyed this video, then check out some of our other First 48 reviews, including another deck builder, Fights in Tight Spaces. And let me know in the comments below if you would love to see this game on Switch. Thank you.